is proud to present the Train the Trainer webinar series. You're watching Using Webinar Engagement Tools Effectively with Steve Hughes. I'd like to ask you a question. What is the number one complaint about webinars from webinar audiences? You might not be surprised to hear it's this. Webinars are boring. And what that really is coming down to, if you boil that answer down, they're saying the audience doesn't have a chance to participate the way they do in a live setting. Asking questions can be difficult. Feeling there's a, like there's a dialogue between the speaker and the audience isn't usually there because it's such a mechanical, distant kind of learning situation. Well, there's a better way. And we're gonna change all that today, if at all possible, in this video. The first thing we need to do, though, is define webinars. So there's a lot of definitions out there, but the way we are calling it here is a webinar is a series of PowerPoint slides delivered voice only over an online platform. So no video, no one can see what you're doing. So you can wear whatever you like, your jam pajamas, whatever it might be, but it's just sl slides and a voice. The key to success is planning and planning ahead of time. The first part of that is making sure you know and familiarize yourself with the webinar platform that your provider is using. There are a whole host of uh, providers out there and platforms. Sometimes the chat function's on the right, sometimes this is on the left, sometimes the polling's up here. The main thing is to know what those different features are and doing that ahead of time. Similarly, you wanna make sure that you think through and plan your webinar, not just here's my content, but here's my content and how can I make it more engaging for my audience? Those two things will make you a shining star. My name is Steve Hughes, the president of Hit Your Stride. Essentially, I help people look and sound smart when they talk. And I work with a whole host of firms and corporations and CLE providers. The main reason I show this slide is to show a picture of myself because I want you to do the same thing. When you show a picture of yourself, it helps humanize the process. It takes you from a bodiless voice somewhere in the internet, the, the cyber sphere, and makes you a real person and helps them engage you more directly, which is nice. The first thing you wanna do when using PowerPoint tools online, or specifically webinar tools online, is to set expectations. Your audience is probably used to being very passive, so you need to tell them up front that you want them to get the most out of the webinar, and the way that's gonna happen is to let them know it will be interactive for their benefit, and more importantly, you wanna remind your audience of the tools available to them, the tools you want them to use, and we're gonna unpack those here in the next few slides. The main thing as you think about webinar tools is it's just like a muscle. It's kind of use it or lose it. So if you will use these tools, you will less likely lose your audience. So if you use these tools, good things can happen. The first and perhaps easiest one that I recommend everyone use is what I, what, what's called the, the, the chat function or for Q&A. So on this particular screenshot, and yours might be different, in the lower right-hand corner, there's a little area that just says simply chat or questions or Q&A. It's, it's a different title for each one. But that's where you wanna encourage your audience to say, if you have a question for me or a comment or a point I just said did not land well or you're confused about something, please just type it in and, and anonymously, essentially, they can type in their question or concern and you can answer it. Consider having a co-pilot to help field the questions. It's hard enough to deliver the material and read those. If you have a co-pilot with you, a co-presenter, they can just sit there silently and hear what the, read what the questions are and then respond to, the, to them as a need be. Polling is a big one. Polling is exciting. People love to be a part of a poll. You see it on sports sites, you see it on Facebook, you see it all over the place. People love to voice their opinion and see how do I stack up to other folks. Practically every webinar provider has a polling function. And then once you do it ahead of time, you set up the poll, then people have a chance to vote. They lean forward. If they happen to be in email, they exit out of that and get a chance to vote and say their opinion. And they get to see the results right there. This is, happens to be a LinkedIn poll from a, a previous webinar. So it's a great way to do it. Just ask your webinar provider, your CLE provider to help you out in setting up that poll ahead of time. Many webinar platforms have what they call a, a feedback button. Some do, some don't, but in case yours does, here's how that works. You essentially can say, raise your hand or press the raise your hand button if this has ever happened to you. And someone can quickly, in this case, you see Todd Lewis there raise his hand to say, yes, that happened to me. Or you can do a thing where you have people go faster or slower. And that might be in the form of that kind of warning sign or the, the, a road sign that says you can't go here or wrong way or something like that. The key thing is if, if you say, hey, are we going too quickly, going too slowly, and let your audience vote, and you can know you maybe need to speed up, perhaps you need to slow down. Whatever is going on, you want to make sure that you are in touch with your audience at all times. 
Lastly, you might say, hey, who has a question or concern about this? It's not necessarily a question for them to ask, just if, if of your 50 people on the line and 30 of them all click, I have a question or a concern about that, maybe you need to spend more time unpacking that. So essentially you're asking your audience, raise your hand if this is going on. Uh, click faster or slower. Uh, tell me if you have a question. Is this sitting right? It, it, are we tracking correctly? You want those things to be going on. The more you ask of your audience, the more they will appreciate it. They may not respond right away, be patient, but good things can happen. And let's say, for instance, you don't happen to have those kinds of functions. Go back to the chat or Q&A function, which I know every webinar provider has, and you can say, hey, folks, has this ever happened to you? Or, or have you ever experienced this in this particular trial situation? They could say yes or no, just type it in. Or you might say, hey, do we need to go faster or slower? Let them type those words in. Or you might say, is this clear or is there some confusion? Does this make sense or not make sense? You, you pick the words, but then let your audience vote. It's fantastic. So you can create all those same features, same functions, just by using the, the chat function. Let your audience know you want to hear from them and keep going back to the well. My recommendation, by the way, is to try to go more, no more than five or 10 minutes at the most without doing something to draw your audience back in. Five really be better. How's this going? Did you, what's your question? What's your thoughts there? Get them talking to you. Consider trying the annotation tools. Almost every webinar provider lets you annotate your slides in real time. So right here you see this person happened to circle primary target, if you can read that, and they drew on their PowerPoint slides. So there's something kind of kinetic and exciting about an audience seeing someone draw on their slides. Essentially, it's the same idea as the laser pointer in a live setting, but you're doing it on a webinar and just kind of circling an idea or underlining a, a graph or you're highlighting a section of a statute. Your choice. So as you think about those webinar tools out there, the chat function, raise your hands, annotate tools, etc., think about which one would you want to use more? Is there one you may have overlooked? And how can you use one going forward in the future? Again, my name is Steve Hughes. I work with law firms, CLE providers to help you look and sound smart, and I wish you happy presenting. A special thanks goes to Steve Hughes of Hit Your Stride and the Illinois State Bar Association for its production contributions. Thanks for watching.